Hi, this is the video that goes along if you are in mini album swaps and more group and if you're just wanting to know how to make a mini album cover but I'm giving exact sizes for this one um, our pages for our mini album page swap that we made our pages six by seven so you're going to want to cut your chipboard you're going to need I start with my two pieces you're going to cut yours at six and a half by seven and a half Mine are different sizes because I am actually not ready to make that album cover, but I had a request to make a cover. Um, this is actually going to be for an 8x8 album I'm working on, but you can still um, make yours. So cut your chipboard 65 by 7 and a half. And I do not make my spine until I make my hinges. So you need to decide for your album are you going to have five pages or are you doing six pages for this particular album I'm going to do five pages and so what I want to do is take my paper and I just cut it about an eighth of an inch shorter than my page so if you have any of your pages made then you'll just take one of your pages because this is the style that we did and you just want to make sure that it will slide snugly but easily so my pages I don't hope this won't confuse you your pages are six inches wide by seven inches long so I cut this you would cut yours at six five and seven eighths wide sorry I cut this one at seven and seven eighths to match this page, but you cut yours at five and seven eighths of an inch wide. So what you, like I said, you want to decide, are you going to have five hinges or six hinges? I'm making mine with five hinges. I don't ever make my spine chipboard piece until I'm done with my hinges so I can measure how big I actually want. It. So I'm starting at one and a quarter because I like to have um, a quarter inch so one and a quarter and a half of an inch I like to have that quarter inch to start with and I'll show you why then from that one and a half I'm going to score half inch half inch and then we're going to score at a quarter of an inch then you're going to score again at half half and you're going to score at a quarter and then we're going to score it half, half, and a quarter. So if you've never made the hinges like this, you'll see that you have in between your quarters, you have the half inch. That's one, two, so we're, we have three of our hinges so far. And we're going to score again at half, half, and a quarter. I'm going to score again at half, half, and a quarter. I'm going to double check. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five of my half inch where they're going to come together, and I'd like to end with a quarter of an inch. You will have extra here depending if you're going to do your five or six. Now, if you're going to do six, go ahead and do half, half, a quarter. You'll need one more set of those. So let me go ahead and put my scoreboard aside. And I like to start with this quarter inch with the shorter edge. And I like to start bending it all before I put any of the score tape on. Now I like to start, like I said, I like this quarter of an inch. I like to have it on my book. I don't um, don't like to have any excess hanging over onto the next page. I've had that happen before where my page tore in the binding and it rips in half, so I, I started, I like this way better. Like There's no wrong way, right way, you just have to do it um, the way you like best. So now I just go down and I grab in between all my half inches and I'm going to start just folding them over and back onto that quarter inch and we're going to just work our way all the way down I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube that you can um, follow there's no right way there's no wrong way 
You just have to do it the way that you are most comfortable with. Now, back here, this is our extra long piece. We're going to end up cutting that off, but I just, I kind of wait. So, on the back side, turn it over, and I like to use quarter inch score tape. I mean, uh, five eighths of an inch score tape. It fits right inside of that half inch, really nice. And I always work with things towards me. So I start with that first one there, and then you're just going to skip a quarter inch, and you're going to work your way on all five of your hinges. And I'm just going to refer to five, but if you are doing six, go ahead. And you'll continue down. Now, on our quarter inch, we're going to now, on all the quarter inch spaces, we're going to go ahead and add quarter inch score tape. Uh, for the video, well, I always use score tape. If you are using a wet adhesive, then of course you, you won't do these steps. So, um, you'll have to just kind of do your wet adhesive as we go. Okay, and then I just make sure it's all down. I do like to flip it over and I clean up these edges. Make sure nothing's hanging over each side. And then we're going to go ahead and start taking off just your half inch. Whoops, still covered in score tape. All right, we're going to take off the half inch or whatever tape you've put here I'm going to remove the backing I do need to turn this, this piece oh now you're just going to go ahead and you start folding those over each other and you'll see how it starts to come together. Once you get the hang of this, it's so easy. And what's nice about it is you can decide how many hinges you want. You don't have to have an even number. You can have an odd number. You can do two. You can do three. You can do four. You can do six. So once we get to this end, now remember we have this quarter inch lip, so I want to make sure that sticks out here. And these get a little bit tight and you have to play with them. But remember, you're the boss here. Now same here, make sure you have that quarter inch right there. So we're going to just turn it over. And you're going to pull it a little bit tight and then just make a mark about where that overhang is. And I, you can put it in your, maybe that would be the easiest, your cutter or you can take a razor blade. Either way is fine. I'm just going to grab my small cutter and I'm going to cut that right off. And now we are going to take off all the backing of our quarter inch score tape. And I always make my album covers at the end. I don't make my album covers in the beginning of an album. Reason being is I've started with five pages and then I've ended up needing to add an extra one for, you know, maybe the order she wanted more pages, or um, I don't, like I said, I may mess up on my pages, and that's why I don't like to make my covers first. So we're going to bend that right over. Now this, I forgot to check it, should match. Now for any reason it's hanging over a little, you're going to want to cut it off. 
you just don't want it to hang over anywhere. So I'm going to take a little extra off. And you'll notice that when I make mine, I don't use any Tyvek. I don't use any Tyvek on my albums whatsoever. And I sell over two, 300 albums a year. I don't really feel Tyvek's necessary, but that again is personal preference. So I'm just going to add some more score tape and clean up the back a little bit. And then again, just kind of push against that quarter inch. Make sure you have that quarter inch over here. Now we're going to play with our hinges a little bit and get them loosened up. You'll see a quarter inch there and a quarter inch there. It's going to sit really nice on your book. Now you have an idea of how big to make your spine. So I've already got a piece of chipboard. It was left over from cutting my my covers. Now I lay. I like to lay my hinge down with about an eighth of an inch on each side, and then I mark. I just mark that, and I had to grab a different cover. Oh, okay, I keep an extra cutter with the blade that I don't use for paper. And on this one, I'm just going to go ahead and put that edge off. Set that aside. I'm sure I'll use that for something. And I'll just clean up. And then I like to lay my hinge back down. So you should have that eighth of an inch on each side. Okay, now we are good to go with our cover. Of course, you want to use your um, 12 by 12 papers. I never, on any of my albums, I never use, especially the Graphic 45 paper to cover the chipboard. I just mat it. I mat it just like I do my pages. That way, I don't have to ever worry about any chipping or, or cracking of my paper. Because once, especially your designer paper cracks or chips, it's kind of devastating, you have to admit. Now, you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You don't need it that long. You need about an inch at the top. So I like to just lay my chipboard down. So you're going to have yours, it'll be six inches by seven and a half. And you should be able to cut off a, a good portion of it. So I just mark it so I have about an inch. I'm going to cut that right off. It just gives you less to have to worry about when you're working with your cover. Now you want to take your two pieces because it will take more than two. And I'm going to put those together. Uh, you can use wet. I'm just using, of course, score tape. And I'm going to put a piece there. And then I'm just going to put a piece here. And you can do it with quarter inch. But you do want to put it on each piece. You'll see when they come together, for instance, when you put them together, some of this will you want to overlap. And so you want to make sure there's C tape on both sides. Or if you're using a wet glue, go ahead and just lightly put glue on each side. We'll do more cutting, so if you don't get these completely straight, you're okay. So make sure that's down. Now, when I do mine, I like to lay my spine right on that where we've put those together and actually I'm just going to clean this up with a sanding block just make sure there's nothing sharp from being cut so it's going to lay right there on that seam and again you can use whatever you know size score tape I'm using a one inch
we're going to remove that. Try this side. There we go. Okay, now I'm just going to send it. I'm eyeballing it. You don't have to be super perfect here. We're going to push that down. Now on both sides, I like to use quarter inch score tape as a spacer. You can go ahead and use anything that you want as a spacer, but I do recommend you use about a quarter of an inch. Some videos I know will tell you to take chipboard doubled and put it there, but it's not enough. You are going to end up with your paper. It's going to crack. And so I just use quarter inch score tape. It serves two purposes. Because we have to cover the inside of the chipboard, it it adheres the top pieces of paper to this and it makes just makes it really nice. You'll see as we're making our album. And you can take these off now or later, it doesn't matter. And we're going to go ahead and get our covers prepared with score tape. Again, I I use this one inch. It's probably overkill. So you use what size you have. I've never had an album fall apart using score tape. So I stick with it and I have found actually just by using score tape and I don't use any other adhesives in my albums. I don't worry about them coming apart. No one has ever called me or sent me an email on the albums they purchased complaining. So um, I just stick with my score tape. And as you can see, you don't have to be particular. You can put it anywhere. I mean it's you don't have to use scissors to make sure it's cut straight unless unless you're OCD and you have to. I totally understand. I figure they don't see this inside part and as long as it's all stuck down nice and tight, you don't have to have those perfect squared edges. Now using Okay, using the score tape, remember though you're working six and a half inches this way, seven and a half inches that way. So you want to make sure you're putting it the right the right way. I just kind of line up to make sure we're straight. Use my finger as a guide and putting it at the other side of this quarter inch score tape. I'll just put that right down. And we're going to do the other side. And you don't have to completely cover the middle, but you do want to make sure you've got, you have it down so your paper has something to adhere to or you will have bubbles just like in wallpaper. All right, let's get these taken off. using our quarter inch right here again. I'm going to first just kind of line it up, not putting it down just so I have an idea. I use my thumb to kind of guide it and keep it straight. And down it goes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way it, you know, there's not a lot of overhang, but on this side, it is a little bit longer than I like. So I'm just going to take my blade. I 
and I just put it about a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch away from this middle line on the Tim Holtz ruler. I'm just going to cut that off and I think I will go ahead and just cut a little bit off this side. So we won't have too much bulk. And then I don't really have to cut anything off the top and the bottom now because we did that beforehand. So now we're going to put tape along all sides, along the top, the sides, and we're going to go ahead and put tape along the chipboard top. Now on your chipboard, there's no need, you don't have to stop and, you know, tear your, your score tape and then um, do another piece. I just go all the way across exactly like I did on, on the paper. And then down. Okay, now for your corners, you are going to want to take some of this off. One thing you can do is just take your corner, gently bring it over your chipboard, and that kind of gives you an idea of where you need to cut because you have to have enough to meet each side so that you don't show your chipboard. And then I just cut a little bit above that line. Or if you're comfortable, you can just eyeball it and cut your corners off. No special tools needed. Just cut off your corners. Okay, now we're going to take off all the score tape. So you have lots of tape exposed here. And I'm just going to take my bone folder, I'm lightly going along these edges. And a word of caution, if you are using one of these cutting mats, and your board hangs over the edge, you want to be careful that you don't stab this through. I have done that. It's heartbreaking to get to this point and then stick your, your bone folder through it because your cover, see, is longer. I'm trying to get it into the camera to show you. There you go. So it, it's longer, and if you're going along with your bone folder stabbing down in, kind of making a score line, and you get there and it drops off, you're going to go right through your paper, so be careful. Now I start with the top here. We're just going to fold that right over. Bone folder, just light. I, you just want to go with this, this side along that edge. I'm going to do it again. I just turned it around. Remember, don't get too rambunctious up here on these edges with your bone folder. You don't want that paper to tear. Now, right here in these creases, if you have a Cricut and you have one of these tools with the rounded edges, or maybe a pencil with a firm eraser, I like to just go along those folded areas and you're going to see how it pushes it down to the score tape. It grabs it, adheres, so you don't have a bubble there and it doesn't try to um, fold over on you. I've had that happen before. I'm just going to help that down. Now you'll notice because you have a nice gap here, you could even fold. see how I'm folding them down upon each other. It's not going to stay that way, of course, 
but you can see how I'm doing that and you're not going to get any rips, tears, cracks. Now we have to deal with these edges. So one thing you want to do is make sure you push these in, these corners. And I'll be honest with you, it's easier if I turn this towards me, I'll try to get in the picture. I turn it in the I turn it so this is facing towards me and then I push this down right over that edge. I hope you can see. I know it might be an odd way to do it, but it's what's easiest. And then I have a nice clean corner. So I'm going to do that again. I just pull back a little bit so I can get that pushed on over. You can also use your, your uh, bone folder to push it over, but I like to use my fingers less chance of tearing or poking through. So now you can see your covers really taking shape. So we have to now cover the inside. Now this part is up to you. Again, you can use your pattern paper. I don't. Along here, Graphic 45 and Die Cuts with a View is the worst for cracking. I don't know why, but I would just prefer to mat it. So you're going to need two more pieces of your whatever color you're going to use from the inside. And let's see, yours is seven and a half inches long. So you're going to cut it just an eighth of an inch shorter. Get mine cut. So you want to make you want to cut it. So I, I usually go an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch shorter so that it matches perfectly. It covers these corners where you folded it under, and then you're you'll have a nice finish for the inside. So we're going to go ahead with this with this first long piece. The second piece we're going to be able to cut to fit. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the cover. And you'll put your tape all the way around. Now for the center, you want to make sure you're going to go the long way. That way, if it happens to be where a hinge is, because your hinges are going up and down, you don't want tape stuck in there to grab your paper and maybe give a wrinkle or a bulge. The covers are probably where you're going to use most of your score tape or red line. That's why I like to use score tape. You can get it in these wider widths, cover more area. Okay, let's bring our cover over. Oh, let me tell you, um, if you wanted to have a ribbon closure, that's also another nice thing because you're going to mat these. You don't have to put your ribbon closure till you put down your pattern paper. You can put it down this. So if you wanted to have a ribbon closure, you could add it now or you can add it underneath your matting. That way it doesn't matter. And that way if you get going and you forget, all is not lost. We're just going to line that up. Now we have to find the area where, there it is, where our bend is. And again, I'm going to show you, I'm going to push that in gently. Now just see how that's creating more of a book look. And yet, I don't have to worry about bending it, but don't go too far. You're, you're not going to be able to go all the way down this time. But you'll see how the score tape has grabbed a hold of that and made a nice uh, divot there in the paper. So we're going to do it again with this side. Turn it. And you can use um, like the end of a pencil. 
the pencil erasers work great. And then just push down. Nothing sharp like your bone folder though. Okay, I'm going to use the side of my bone folder. Make sure that tape is all down, especially on the edges. Got some erase there. See how much firmer that's starting to make your, your spine? Okay, now for this side, of course, you don't need quite as much paper. So I just lay it down and I like to measure it. I'm going to move it up. And I just want to have, a, there's where this paper ends and this one starts. So I just want to have a little bit of an overlap. Go ahead and mark that. I'm going to cut that off. Double check. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and put our, our tape on this piece. I mentioned before how I, I like to do my covers last. And again, the reason being I've started to make pages and then I've decided to change the size of the page or um, I've also made my pages, but because I did a lot of different add-ons that maybe stick out, I've had to go back and remake the cover so it was bigger. That is one reason I don't make my covers till the last. I know some crafters like to do them first. I don't because then you're stuck. You have to make, you know, your album that size or put that one away and make another one for whatever reason. And also the spine. I mentioned before, sometimes I want to do five pages and I'll have a customer want more room. So I end up making six pages. And if I already have my cover put together, that means I start over again on a different cover. So those are my reasons why I make my covers last. Okay, let's match those down. On here, we just put that down. As you can see, you have a nice, beautiful album cover. No cracking. No chipping, nothing, because you've got plenty of room. And so now you can go ahead. We're going to double check our hinges. They're great. So I'm going to go ahead and get the back. The backs of them ready. We can adhere these down. Now, this is the important part. Whatever you are using, make sure it's good, it's strong, because this is going to take, your book's going to take um, a lot of wear and tear here. And I'm actually going to put more tape there in just a minute. But what I want to do is now take my quarter-inch score tape, and I'm going to go ahead and get it on my hinges because it's easier to do it now than when it's down in your book. So I go about halfway and then I just bring my score tape all the way around and I'm going to do it again on each hinge. There we go. Piece of lint sticking out of there. What's fun is you can have a cover put together in about 45 minutes. I don't uh, cut my edges, I'm just going to cut the tape. This is why I make my hinges about a quarter of an inch 
um, shorter than the page. Okay, now that our hinges are all up, I'm going to take a page and just double check. Because if you have to, to miter one of the corners, that is, you know, no problem. But you shouldn't have to with cutting your hinge just an eighth of an inch. See how nice it's going to sit on there? It goes on. And also, you don't have this up and down. You don't have to try and figure out if your pages are even because they're all going to sit the exact same way on each hinge. Okay, so that part's ready. Now we just want to take the tape off the back. Now I'm going to add another piece at the top. And another piece at the bottom. Now you need to decide on your um, album, are you planning on poking a hole? Do you need to cut a hole in it? Do you need, are you going to add charms? So you want to do that part. So if you're going to add charms, do that before you add your hinge or leave enough room. So, because your hinge is, is shorter than your album. It's the size of your pages. Then you just want to center it, decide where you want it. And down it goes. Again, I love this, this tool with Cricut. And I just take the rubber edge and I just go all through my hinges and the space here. The gusset. And then I know it's down there, it's secure. And your album is now ready for your pages. So if you're in the mini album swap group and you're in the mini album page swap, I just said that, didn't I? Sorry. Um, your album will be ready to go. And as you get your pages in, then you can start adding them in the order that you want to. So there's your album cover and your page cover. Should al it's already listed there on each of the events. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.